da 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 Hello! If this outfit looks familiar and this shot looks familiar, you were probably drunk. <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> I'm not a good YouTuber. So anyway, welcome to the February goals video. Woo! So this month I only had two goals because they were both pretty big. And also Febu February is a short month, right? It's only- yes? 28 days. It's only 28 days. So, first goal. I have two friends that perform burlesque. So one day, I went to go see them in a burlesque show. And apparently, at these burlesque shows, they have this thing called the wiggle contest. So they'll bring people onto the stage, and you have to wiggle to win prizes. Like, you have to go up on stage, you have to do a sexy dance, and whoever had the best sexy dance would, like, win some prizes. I... I'm not a very sexy person, so my friends thought it would be funny to get me up on stage. It's definitely the pity boat though. I got off the stage and I was talking to my friend and I'm like, I can't believe I won. I thought I was just like super weird and awkward. And she's like, Momo, you were super weird and awkward. That's why you won. A few months later, me and my post-apocalyptic LARP were throwing Last Night on Earth, which is a huge post-apocalyptic themed cabaret. And I was asked to perform something in it. And everybody else was doing burlesque because it was like typically a burlesque show. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go outside my comfort zone. I'm gonna be brave. I'm gonna like shake things up a bit. I'm gonna do burlesque. I am here with the Atomic Pixie. You may have recognized her from the mermaid video. Do you know who I am? <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay, well, here's my information. It's Corsola. It's Corsola. <laughs> Atomic Pixie here is a professional burlesque performer, and she's gonna answer some questions today about her mysterious art form. What? First of all, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. It's good, okay. <laughs> what is burlesque? Burlesque is the art of striptease, so it's less about being naked and just about the different ways you can get yourself naked. I never noticed until I started like choreographing my routine. It's really hard to take off your clothes and have it look nice. What are the core components of a burlesque act? The stripping is a really big <laughs> part of it. Going up there, being confident in yourself, having a great time, making a cool costume. Uh, you gotta be sparkly. Dressed up, you gotta be sparkly. You gotta be rhinestones sparkly. are important. Oh, can you actually tell me um, the significance of the rhinestones? The rhinestones help uh, differentiate between reality and fantasy. So when you're on stage, you're this like fantastical, ethereal creature, like regardless of what you're doing. Because sometimes like there's a lot of comedy and burlesque and stuff. But it's to create a wall kind of between the audience and the performer. Uh, what's the difference between burlesque and stripping? I've never been to a strip club, so is it essentially just like, believe it or not, actually, <laughs> I've never been to a strip club. So when I get up on stage, I create my choreography, I create my costume, I create what makes me feel empowered and sexy, and I'm bringing that to other people. It's like, this is what makes me feel sexy. I didn't ask you what you <laughs> thought would make me look sexy. I'm a huge nerd, so I have a couple like Pokemon Ones, and I'm like, I really want to do this Pokemon. Whereas stripping a lot of the time is more about providing their fantasy. Someone goes into a strip club looking for a certain experience, you're there to provide them with that experience. What are some like really annoying questions you get asked and stuff? A lot. A big question is what does your boyfriend think of it? <laughs> your, your boyfriend also does. Yes, <laughs> my boyfriend also does burlesque. Could they just type in like, my city burlesque? Yeah, that's probably the best way to find the bur the burlesque in your city. Is. Where can people find you online, Miss Atomic Pixie? You can find me on Instagram at the underscore atomic underscore pixie. She posts quality selfies. <laughs> and on Facebook at Atomic Pixie Burlesque. Those are my two big ones. So from the Wiggle contest, I won a five class pass for any drop-in class at the Toronto School of Burlesque. So I only had time to go to one of the classes of my five class pass, and I decided to do a Beyonce dance class. Cause they have classes like that too. Like it's not all just like taking your clothes off one <laughs> Was 
was so fun. It was so fun. And it did what I hear burlesque does to a lot of people. It made me feel like more confident and sexy. And then I started working on my own routine. It's for last night on earth, but it's becoming increasingly difficult with my new editing buddy. Oh, Lucy. <laughs> oh God, thank you. With help from Ashley, I started choreographing my routine. One of the biggest tips she gave me that was actually really helpful is when you're doing burlesque, there's like three stages and you have to act as if the audience is like both drunk and stupid. So stage one is you have to show the audience your piece of clothing. Like, oh, this is my glove. Look at my glove. Second stage. Oh, I'm taking off my glove. Look at the way I take off this glove. It's so majestic. Stage three. Okay, I'm doing something with the glove now. Okay, and I'm throwing it away. So like presentation, removal, disposal. And then it was time for the performance and I wanted to die. I was behind stage and one of my other friends who's a burlesque performer was with me and I was freaking out. I was hyperventilating. I was like, dude, I can't do this. Dude, I can't do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna throw up everywhere. And he's just like, Momo, you're fine. You're gonna be fine. We have someone who's been on this stage before but not in this capacity. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of her this time. I go out there and I was not fun. I, I step on stage and I'm still freaking out. And then I turn around and I hear the first like, woo, and that's when it hit me. And I was like, okay, okay, I got this, I got this. And this is the was scary and so far out of my comfort zone and uh, that's how I achieve most of the rewarding things in my life. It's amazing how often my feeling of fear and my feeling of excitement coincide. Anyway, my second goal was just to like finish all the outstanding editing that I had to do. It's March now. I'm still working on that. So that goal is still in the middle of happening. Editing takes a long time, okay? Uh, but I thought for that goal, I would take you through my process for editing a video. So today is my day off. Today is an editing day. So as you can see, I've got some like sleek, sleek editing fashion going on. I have conditioner in my hair. I thought about doing makeup for this video, but then I was like, no, realism. I look like Yoda whenever I edit, okay? I have something to sip and something too much. So we are going to get started on a video today and I'm going to take you through my process. So a question I get asked a lot is what program do I use? I use Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a uh, student version of the Adobe Cloud, which is like all of the creative Adobe apps. So like Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects and all that. If you're just starting out with YouTube or if you're just starting out with video editing, I don't necessarily recommend Premiere Pro because editing softwares to me are kind of like an instrument. They're completely useless unless you know how to use them properly. Like most of the stuff that I do in a lot of my simpler videos where it's just like cut, 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 zoom in a little for humorous effect, zoom back out, add a title. Like that stuff you can do on iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. The only time Premiere Pro or After Effects comes into play is when I do like the special effects stuff that you'll see in the College of Wizardry videos or like if I make short films, which I really I want to do it again so bad, but God, I have no time. It's only when I'm doing things very complex that Premiere Pro and like After Effects and all that are actually very useful. Also, it's, it's just what I know how to use. It's what I've been taught to use when I was working as a wedding cinematographer. Also, I film with the Canon 60D, for those who want to know. And this is the Yeti microphone, which I started using in my vlogs and for song covers and stuff. So what I do for editing. First, I compile all of the footage that I took. 
and I put it into what is called a rough cut. Basically a rough cut is just going through the footage and seeing what's usable and just like getting rid of the rest. So it's basically just like a long, very boring um, edit of all of the footage that you could potentially use in the final video. So typically like if I'm going to an event or something, I'll send the rough cut immediately to the person that sent me they so they can see all the footage that I got. And that gives them time to be like, oh no, we don't really want this in the video or oh, this sounds great. You should put this in the video. And so while they're looking at that, I can like start editing the final product. And then when I go through the rough cut, I take my handy dandy little YouTube notebook here and I'll make some notes. Notes in a notebook. That's crazy. Hey, when I did my like, just sit down commentary type shot, like we're doing now, do you know what I mean? I mentioned the food. And at this point in the rough cut, you see the food. So I'll know when I come across that part in the commentary, I'll go back to the rough cut, find that footage of the food, put it in. And then you add what we call B-roll. So let's say you're watching like a news report, right? And you'll have the lady with the microphone being like, everyone's dead, there's six fires and a tornado. And then over top of that, they'll have footage of the six fires and the tornado. The footage of the six fires and the tornado playing over top of this lady talking is B-roll. So in this video, I'm talking about the Vampire the Masquerade LARP. And at one point we talk about this. So cool, it's about like two very different castles thrown into one. And that really helped because we had like high class vampires and low class vampires. And I felt like the castle like perfectly kind of symbolized what was happening at the game. Wouldn't it be way more interesting instead of me telling you about this thing for you to just see the thing. So we're gonna add some B-roll and this is what it looks like. It was so cool because it felt like two very different castles thrown into one and that really helped because we had like high class vampires and low class vampires and I felt like the castle perfectly symbolized what was happening at the game. Show don't tell, add some B-roll. Have fun. So anyway, this is the February Eagles. Yay! So I'll see you in March. Freeze frame. Are you clapping? Very quietly. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm done. Mm. I think I'm done. If there's anything else I forgot to say, I'll put it over top of this shot. And future me will just yell it past me. Is it nap time now? Yes?